solve large intractable problems. It's a new venture altogether. Your brain is a wild horse there. Because remember, writing is not a team sport. You are not selling horse carriages when there are cars. I want to be known only as a trusted advisor. More like a tourist. Play to Potential Podcast. A related point you mentioned in the book, uh, Raghu, is you talk about the distinction between heroic and asuric action. Mm -hmm. And you say that it uh, often the difference is the state of emotion one operates on. You touched upon it right mm -hmm. now. Uh, and you go on to say that we all need to operate from a state of equanimity or shantam. Mm -hmm. Can you say more about this? See, shantam is a very, very highly valued uh, state of being. All of yoga actually attempts to bring you to that state of shantam or equanimity. Okay, shantam is usually translated as peace, which is a, you know, it's not peace. It's the state of quiet, high potential, but completely quiet, right? It's like a good, you know, like Federer or a good batsman who's still mm. and watching the ball. He's not pre-committed in any way. He's very alive. Mm. That is shantam. Right? And he can respond immediately to whatever is appropriate. If you're pre-committed, you can't do that. Mm. Right? So Shantam is that pregnant, powerful silence. Right? Fully alert and fully alert. Fully alert, fully alive. All mm. possibilities. Mm. Now, if I can find a way of getting there and being there most of the time, imagine how powerful I'll be. Right? And every action of mine will then be the best that I can be. In that moment. In that moment. Mm. Right? But most of us are caught with conditioning. That's the compulsion, compulsiveness and all that that I talked about. Now, mm. We're caught at different other states which are much more suboptimal than this. Mm. Right? So Shantam is a very, very prized way to be. I mean, uh, Chanakya has written a book on why a leader should be a yogi, why a king should be a yogi. And he's written about yoga and he emphasizes this, right? How does this person stay in Shantam? And then when you're adjudicating, you're going to be as wise as you can be. When you decide to fight somebody, you know whether it's a real fight or a self-acquisitive fight, mm -hmm. right? So if you can be in Shantam, the chances are you will respond from a deeper intelligence. That's the Krishna voice that I said. But if you're not, the chances are you're going to respond from a self-centered mm -hmm. space, either in pleasure-seeking or pain avoidance, right? Either acquisitive or violent, reactive. Any action that comes out of self-centeredness will turn out to be asuri. It's not dharmic. And for busy leaders in the corporate world, uh, mm -hmm. you've done a lot of work with leaders in the corporate world. What, uh, how, what do you advise them to start, uh, at least to go in the direction of ac accessing Shantam? What, uh, what are some of the practices See, that you have? Um, I think there is a greater and greater understanding today that mindfulness, at least, na, is understood as an important thing. Right? And I know a lot of leaders, uh, I've had a long conversation with, uh, um, uh, what's his name, Bansi. Uh, who's that guy? Yeah, the, he's there in the book also. Vallabh Bansali. Yeah, I've had a long conversation with Vallabh Bansali. Now, he talks about the importance of Vipassana meditation and how it helped him. As a, mm. as a human being, mm. right? There are many younger people, Velayan, whom again I've interviewed in the book, he speaks about how much he's been influenced by Sadhguru, mm. right? There's a Mustafa whom I discuss with. Yes. He speaks about how studying the Quran in depth has helped him to understand how to make decisions. And his life is a very interesting life. PC Mustafa, ID yeah, Foods. Yeah, PC Mustafa, yes. ID Foods, yeah. Phenomenal. Right. 
so there are many people who have this in them na mm-hmm. they know that they are gifted something in their life has told them i must use this gift in ways that are dharmic that help people right and their the leadership that they exhibit the way they deal with people is of a different order yeah there are other people whom i've seen whom i've met who've got triggered by you know an opportunity in the market or this or that mm-hmm. right their approach definitely has an acquisitiveness where utilitarian philosophy na using oneself as a as a tool and using other people around as tools mm. predominates mm. i don't see these organizations unless there is some big shift that happens becoming institutions you know like the tatas for example you see you see them describe many of their decision making processes it's mm. profoundly human it has a huge dharmic a uh, underlying thing around it they might make mistakes here and there that's fine sure yeah but most of the leaders i've met there have this ability to be self reflective to ask the larger question and things like that mm. yeah and i i'm absolutely certain if the world has to go forward from where we are now unless there are many many leaders of this kind na you mm. cannot look at a at a meaningful future mm. we are at the brink 